we have uh, Sanjeev Bhasin of IFL now joining us. Sanjeev, good morning. Uh, I wanted your thoughts on two auto names. Uh, Aishar Motors, uh, so much news flow. Uh, we had short covering bounce that got sold into. Uh, and now there are a couple of downgrades. Uh, and the stock we were just discussing, Maruti, which ended at the high point yesterday and has seen some buying over the last two, three days. Your thoughts on both these names? Yeah, good morning. So, uh, you know, we've been slightly contrarian and when we got the opportunity below 20,000 on Aisha, we last time we used that as a buying opportunity. Uh, consumption, uh, in the consumption theme, auto has been the biggest wealth creators in the last five years. And this one or two, three quarter hiatus is, is, is now getting solved due to the NBFC embroglio, due to the insurance norm and some of the Axel, uh, you know, uh, Axel norms. But we still think that come uh, June quarter onward, you should start to see strong traction as consumption spending starts. And you see, uh, you know, the new layout of uh, CapEx for the private side, which will again uh, reinstate a lot of positivity in the commercial vehicle. So again, uh, around 20,000, Aisha becomes a buy. Same is the case with Maruti now. You priced in the worst. I think the volumes were better than what was expected. Margins may again uh, be a little bit weak for another quarter. But we are very, very bullish on both these stocks with a longer term view. And uh, in the commercial vehicle, Ashok Leland is our top pick around that 85 mark. We think uh, electric vehicle, BS4 norms, and the renewed strength in uh, their intermediate commercial vehicle will see a re-rating of stock in the next two quarters. Okay, Sanjeev, hi, good morning. Since we are on the subject of autos, I wanted your thoughts on what one should do if one is an Amara Raja Batteries shareholder. Would you be concerned about Johnson Control terminating that agreement, the technological agreement, or do you think it doesn't impact business in the longer run? Yeah, yeah so Sonia, I have not had a full look at the event uh, or the, you know, uh, prologue with that. And uh, reasonably, we've been more bullish on Excite. And we think that uh, Excite stands a better chance of outperforming given their uh, more ascent on lithium iron and also their market share gain uh, in, in the next few quarters. So for us, Amar Raja, Amar Raja is an avoid, but we will again go through the, the, the new you know, development. I don't think the seizure of uh, brand with, uh, with uh, Johnson Control will have such a big impact. And, and I think, again, uh, once we rework the work, we think that since uh, you know the battery market is a duopoly, we think second half will belong to autos and you should see a strong volume growth. So as a disclosure, Aishar would be, a, Excite would be a buy around this 210. Uh, for Amar Raja, we will have to work out the numbers more. Okay. Uh, Sanjeev, good morning and good to have you with us. I think after quite some time, uh, uh, thanks for joining in. What about NBFCs? Have we seen enough water flow under the bridge and it looks like the current, uh, the coming upcoming policy uh, will also be kinder uh, to the system, either in terms of cost of money or quantity of money. Uh, what would you do with uh, NBFCs? Which would be your uh, buy list? Yeah, good morning, Lata. Good point. And you have an RBI policy at a time when US bond yields are showing a recession at 202 2.5. So, you know, the, all the hum, humdum of 3.2 about four months back is done with. And for us, it's been a very sweet spot given that inflation is lower and our yields are hitting three-year lows. So I think a 25 basis point is done. I think an accommodative policy is on the card. The event would be how this pass-through follows through and how we see NBFCs come back on the table. You've clearly seen a shafting of the men from the boys. Bajaj Finance is hitting new highs. So is LIC, so is HDFC. So continue to stay with the larger players. As a contrarian play, we think uh, LNT Finance would be a dark horse. 120 was a very strong buying, uh, you know, very, very strong lucrative price level. We think LNT Finance, given its pedigree, will be an outperformer. Uh, LIC Housing, HDFC is what we named, and Bajaj Finance at the top of it. You can add a m and Finance, which we think, again, will start to see more traction from second half. The rest would be an avoid unless you are really brave-hearted because I think for the fundamentals to change, it will take more than six months. Okay. Uh, what about Reliance Industries, Sanjeev? I know we've discussed this at length before, but this morning, Credit Suisse has initiated coverage on the stock and they say that Geo's EBITDA is expected to more than double over the next two years to about $5 billion. Um, you think it's still worth a buy despite the run-up that Reliance has seen? 
Well, Sonia, Reliance has been uh, the, the outperformer on any price, whether on the price front, on the returns front, on the on the you know on the balance sheet front, and Geo is uh, taking it right from the top. You are also headed for one of the biggest social media events in the elections, and I think data coverage is going to be at the all-time highs. Uh, it stands to gain maximum. I think pricing is now going to be back surely or slowly. And again, I think, but you know, if we had a buy at 1000 at 1450 to stick our neck out would be difficult. But again, if you are playing a two-year story, then 1750 on Reliance should be on the card. As a contrarian play at 285, 290, we stuck our neck outs on Bharti, which we thought would be the best proxy. As prices stabilize and ARPUs have been, you know, hitting absimal lows, we still think Bharti is headed for close to 375. It's been a relative outperformer, but we both think Reliance and Jio are going to take the space in the telecom. Okay. Uh, well, more generally, uh, at all-time highs for the Nifty and the Nifty Bank and the Sensex, what are you doing? Are you putting uh, incremental money in the biggies or are you fishing in mid-caps and if yes, which ones? So, Lata, I think this rally has been, uh, you know, very, very swift and very, very uh, um, liquidity driven in the sense the FIs have bought like there was no tomorrow. And if you have been weathering the storm in the last year, mid-caps have given you a very, very sweet uptick in the last one and a half month. I still think 11,700 is not a top. I, do, I think 12,000 in this rally is definitely on the cards. And in the month of April, uh, we'll take it from there. But I think mid-caps are going to be the flavor. So if I could name few stocks, it would be ITC, ACC, Axis, Reliance, Dr. Reddy in the large caps. We are very, very bullish on, uh, if you recall, I had given you a penny stock, 15 rupees GMR. It's hit 21, but I can now confirm that 30 would be my target in the next one year, given that they are now concentrating on their, the best space which they have is the airports. And I think the valuation which the Tata uh, equity, uh, you know, infusion is going to do is going to definitely see this stock do well. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be uh, NBCC, Ashok Leland, Ultratech Cement. Uh, you know, we are very, very bullish on that. We are very, very bullish on Nagarjuna construction. Some of the uh, PSUs, which were a scream, you know, whether it's IGL, MGL, or even, uh, you know, uh, 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 Gale, I think they have outperformed. And BEL, BEL and BEML, uh, these are two stocks which we are very, very bullish. And we think uh, uh, PSU re rating could be on the cards once you are through with a stable government after the election. Okay, we have plenty of questions for you, uh, Sanjeev. So we'll continue the discussion on the other side of the break. But for now, it's time for a quick commercial break. We'll come back with the pre-opening rates. Also, A. Prasanna, the chief economist of ICICI Securities PD, will talk to us about the pre-policy positioning. Sorry, that's it.